Okay, so let's look at where, um, we're going to look at where electrons are most likely to be moving around um, inside the atom um, or around the atom. So, um, try not to butcher this too much, go as quick as I can, but we're looking at an atom here. We know we have protons and our neutrons, protons, positively charged particle, our neutrons, um, no charge, they're the glue that kind of holds those protons in. And then we have electrons that um, hover in these clouds or orbital shells around the nucleus. So um, we'll represent that with just a minus. So there's two electrons there. We'll go ahead and put Uh, we'll come back to that here in a bit. So, protons, neutrons, then we have our electrons um, hovering um, around in these different orbital shells, and there's lots of them depending on what kind of atoms you have. So, um, here's the nucleus, and then we have what we call principal energy levels. And within those principal energy levels, we actually have sub-levels um, within those main principal energy levels. The main principal energy levels we label as an N, and those are just simply 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. If you look right here, here's the nucleus. Um, the, the first energy level is actually the, far, the one that has the biggest gap from the nucleus, but as you get further away from the nucleus, um, those energy levels, they increase in energy. So... Um, and electrons have to gain or lose a certain amount of energy to be able to go from one energy level to the next. So as we move away from the nucleus, um, the, the energy level of these, uh, these orbitals um, continues to increase as you get further away from the nucleus. And you can see that those, those orbitals, um, those energy levels actually get closer together as well. Um, so. Again, principal energy levels, we have one, two, three, four, and five. And then we have these sublevels. So, um, and I'm going to erase this and put this on the next page, and then we'll do a couple practice problems just to kind of figure it out. Because ultimately, what we're going to be doing is writing what we call an electron configuration, which is just a way to represent, hey, where are these electrons um, within these specific atoms? So, um, within the first principal energy level, we just have one sublevel, and that, that is the 1s2 orbital. We call those sublevels orbitals. Um, that will only hold two electrons, and this will make more sense as I erase and we kind of go on to the next one. Um, the second energy main energy level actually has two sublevels. It's got the 2s and the 2p orbital shell, okay? Um, and then it keeps going from there, which I will, will continue to do on the next one. So principal energy levels, and then we have these sub-levels of where these electrons are actually um, moving around um, in the atom and around the nucleus. Okay? All right. So uh, I'm going to get just get rid of it all, try to give you just a little bit better of a, of a visual here. And there's a few different ways we can do this. Um, so if we look at our energy level, I wish I had a big old board. Remember, we represent that by N. So we have principal energy level one, principal energy level two, principal energy level three, principal energy four. It keeps going, but for our um, sake and for our understanding today um, and towards the end of the year, we're just gonna make sure that we get a good grip of this. And then if we take AP Chem next year, we'll dive further into this, um, or once you get into um, Gen Chem 1 and Gen Chem 2 in college, you'll obviously cover this stuff. So, um, and then we have our sublevels. Okay, so for our first one, um, for the first principal energy level, we have the sublevels called the 1s orbital. Okay, and these s's and p's and d's, they actually, they, they stand for something, but it's really weird and it doesn't matter to our understanding. So, um, this has the 1s orbital level. The second main energy level has the 2s orbital shell 
and the 2p orbital shell. And I know none of this makes sense, but it will here in a second. The third energy level has the 3s, it has the 3p, and it also has the 3d. Fourth energy level, 4s, 4p, 4d, and then it actually has the 4s as well. Okay? Now, for each of these energy levels, um, for each of these sublevels, they, they can only hold so many. So the S orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. The P orbital can hold a maximum of six electrons. The D can hold 10 electrons. And then the F orbital can hold 14 electrons. Okay? Within each principal energy level here, if we go across here, our first energy level, I'm going to put a star here by the one, that first energy level can hold a maximum of two electrons. So if you look at the top of the periodic table, we've got uh, um, hydrogen and helium. Um, that's our 1s1 and our 1s2, our two orbital shells. So, um, N2, our second energy level can hold up to 8 electrons. Our third can hold up to 18. And then our fourth one can hold up to 32. So if I'm sitting there with you right now, I'm thinking, what is he talking about? What is all this stuff? Maybe you kind of get it. What does all this mean? Um, it's actually really, really, really easy once we kind of got this down. So um, keep in mind, again, I'm going to shorten this up. I'm going to leave some of this up here so we can all see it. Our S's, again, can hold 2. Our P's can hold 6. Our D's can hold 10. And our F's can hold 14. So we'll go ahead and do the work and do some practice here to write this out. And this is how it's all going to click for you, I think. So... Um, if we want to look in the book, um, and just remember, electrons enter the lowest um, energy orbital and principal energy shell. Um, that's got to be full before electrons will move on to the next energy level. If that's not full, we won't have electrons in that next energy level. Okay, so if we look for the few of you have, that have your book, um, if you look on page 369, I'll find it here. 